Top 10 sneakers under $100 for back to school. This was a suggestion for you guys and one that I like to do every single year anyway. Where do I fit in the mix? Because I'm just an old man over here uh, that likes sneakers, right? I think wisdom is something that I have in my back pocket because I've been collecting sneakers for years. When it comes to back to school and I think back to my high school years and it was just awkward and I didn't have a lot of money. One of the feelings that I had on a regular basis was just the desire to fit in, not necessarily be the top of the class, wear my off whites, my Louis Vuittons and stuff like that. I didn't have any money and stuff like that. I wasn't going to buy fake sneakers to pretend like I could either. For me, it was just being able to try to fit in. So really the sneakers that I'm going to be covering for you guys in this top 10 list are sneakers for you to just help fit in. Kind of normal sneakers, legacy sneakers, ones that have a lot of lineage within these brands. And a legacy model is kind of like a timeless model, one that doesn't go away. It's one that's produced by the brands every single year pretty much. And the reason why I wanted to focus on this is because sometimes brands create new stuff that they try to catch uh, a wave on here and there. By the time you're done wearing it, let's say sophomore year in high school, school junior senior year in high school the shoes are no longer relevant and this way you can actually just stack your arsenal you could wear these shoes this year and then next year and the year after that they'd probably still be good to go as well because again they're timeless models now if you guys want to purchase any of the sneakers that i'm going to be talking about in this video there are links in the description to be able to buy them from the respective brands and if you guys do use my links it is an affiliate link which means i do get a small kickback and a commission from the sites that you guys utilize the links to and it lets those brands know that you guys support my channel and it does directly support the channel so it's greatly appreciated when you guys use my links so top 10 timeless models under hundred dollars. Let's go ahead and jump into it So the first shoe that we're gonna start off with is vans and I'm gonna go with the old schools now You could do the slip-ons you could do the skate highs There's a ton of different models whatever really fits your style, but I'm gonna go with the vans old schools There's a lot of history uh, behind the model and they're only like $70. So that's not a bad price point I like that. It's a low top cut as well The old schools were created in 1977 and it was a new low top style and it was vans first skate shoe that actually incorporated leather panels The now iconic side stripe was originally just a random doodle by the the brand's founder Paul Van Doren, which he referred to at the time as the Jazz Stripe. Fast forward 45 years later, it's not just a doodle anymore, it's definitely a hallmark on the uh, old school model. Anyway, you can buy these for like $70. It's a great looking model. They have a bazillion different colorways. And again, Vans in general are very wearable shoes. Next on the list, we have a timeless sneaker that is actually over a hundred years old. It's crazy to even think that is even possible, but Converse has been around since 1908. It was a rubber company founded by Marquise Mills Converse. They initially specialized in winterized rubber sold footwear, but then the sport of basketball came along and changed the game. Converse All-Stars were actually introduced in 1917 under the name Non-Skids. It was a high top silhouette with a rubber sole and a canvas upper. It had a cushioned insole and arc and heel support as well as an iconic diamond tread pattern. And a few years later, Chuck Taylor joined the Converse team as a salesman. He came on board and enhanced the shoes, flexibility and ankle support. And from that point, the Chuck Taylor All-Star was born. 100 years old, dude, it's insane. And the crazy thing to me is that this is still a timeless shoe. It doesn't matter where you go, you're gonna see kids and grandparents and everything in between at weddings and just parties and everything that wearing Chuck Taylor All-Stars. You could wear the low top versions, the high top versions. Personally, I like the the low top versions I think they look great and they do fit a little bit big so I'm a size 9.5 I like to go down to a size 9 but the price points as low as $40 up to $100 if you just want to fit in just get a black regular low top pair of chucks or a black high top pair of chucks it's just another pair that you could have in your arsenal and honestly it's again very very timeless all right so next on the list we're moving on to the Reebok classics from what I understand the Reebok classic was actually inspired by the GL 6000 and was first released in 1986 the Reebok classic leather is a very iconic looking shoe it's about $75 and if you're a Reebok fan, I mean, this is just one of the ones that just fits the mold. Now, they do have a legacy version of the Reebok Classic as well. It's definitely more like a new age runner, but if you just want that classic appeal from 86, definitely go with the Reebok Classic leather. And again, under $100. In a similar vein, we have the Puma Suede. And in 1972, Puma signed an endorsement with Walt Clyde Frazier and created a signature model known as the Clydes, which is very similar to the Suede. The Puma Suede's obviously have a suede upper on them, and it's a very classic, iconic looking shoe, rubber outsole, and then suede panels on the side along with a wavy little suede. You can get the Puma Suede's for as low as $45 on Foot Locker's site. Again, I'll link these as well as the rest of them in the description of the video. But if you're wanting something that's a little bit different than a pair of Nikes and a pair of Adidas and stuff like that, Puma Suede is a great way to go. Now you can get other models from Puma as well, but the Puma Suede's are over 50 years old. It's definitely tried and true. And it's a very iconic looking model from Puma. It's also one that was adopted in the 80s uh, by b-boys and, and breakdancers and whatnot. So I feel like there's definitely a rich history there in the 80s. So it's just a great all-around pair of sneakers that won't break the bank at $45 to $60. It's crazy to think that you can get a pair of suede sneakers for that price point when suede on Jordans are like $210. Like you can get the Puma suede for like $45 and then save the rest of your back to school
cool money for like an outfit or something like that. But they have lots of different colorways available in this model as well. All right, next up, we're gonna go to the Adidas Sambas. Now this is one that I keep seeing over and over again. In fact, my brother has a pair of Sambas that he wears all the time. Everywhere I go, I actually see people wearing Sambas. Part of the reason why is because they're just very well-made pair of sneakers. They obviously have deep roots in soccer, but it's pretty much a leather or suede upper and rubber outsole, similar to a lot of the timeless sneakers that we're talking about in this list. The Sambas actually have sold over 35 million pairs worldwide, second behind Stan Smith's uh, in sales, and were originally released in 1949. 1949 dudes, I mean, 70 years old, I'm not good at math, but this is a tried and true sneaker that Adidas continues to make in lots of different colors and lots of different variations. The classic ones, the standard ones, the OG ones are the ones that I think look the best. I think back when I was in high school, they were very strongly associated with soccer, rightfully so, but there wasn't much of a lifestyle crossover. And I think in modern times, I think there's way more of a lifestyle crossover, meaning you could wear them if you play soccer or not. Same as basketball shoes, you could wear them even if you never played basketball, just because they've evolved into a lifestyle model. Anyway, Samas are about 60 to $100 as well. A great purchase and definitely one that lasts. Next from Adidas, we have one of my favorites that I've been talking about a lot, the Adidas Forum, specifically the Forum Low 84. Those ones are my favorites. Did you guys actually know Michael Jordan played in the Forums? He actually wore them in the 84 Olympics, which is nuts, right? This is before the Air Jordan ones. Back then, Jordan was on the hinge whether he was gonna sign with Adidas or Nike. He ended up signing with Nike and created Jordan brand and the rest is history now. But the Adidas Forum is a retro model from the 80s, actually from 83 specifically, designed by Jock Chassing, if that's how you say his name. Any which way, he designed them in 83 and there's been a timeless model that Adidas shelved for a long time they brought them back in recent years and they have a whole bunch of different collaborations as well as high top and low top and mid top versions. Personally, I like the 84 low top versions. I think they look the cleanest and they have a bunch of different colorways available on Adidas website right at the $100 price with $90 to $100. Great looking model though and really kind of equivalent to like the Nike Air Force One on the Adidas side if you want something just a little bit different. I'm also gonna throw in a bonus one in this top 10 list and it's the Adidas Ultra Boost. Now I know traditionally the Adidas Ultra Boost is $180, $210, $230 pair of sneakers so it doesn't fit in that $100 price point. However, I always post them on sale on Collective Kicks and if you guys don't follow along, you guys should be following along on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that because I always post them on sale when they hit that $100 threshold. Usually they're like $108 uh, on the higher end, but sometimes you can get them down in the 90s and stuff. And so anytime you can get a pair of Ultra Boost under $100, I think it is a steal. It's a really comfortable, great pair of sneakers, one that I've been wearing since the inception of the Ultra Boost when they originally came out. And it's a tried and true comfort model, really the pair of sneakers that sparked the comfort revolution in footwear. Like the Ultra Boost material with the TPU pellets that are fused together really changed the game for comfort. And it's still a really, really comfortable pair of sneakers uh, that I thoroughly love to wear. So Ultra Boost, when you can get them on sale, uh, also included on this countdown. Now moving on, we have another classic, the New Balance 574. Now this is a very affordable model from New Balance. Low as $70, upwards of $130 for collaborations, but really a great looking pair of sneakers that is very simple. Now New Balance has definitely had a different wave with a lot of the sneakers that they have, especially the 990s. Those ones run around $200 though, so it's definitely more expensive, more luxury, definitely some really nice materials on those. You get some really decent materials on the 574s as well at a fraction of the price. So there was a 575 released in 86 and an updated version of the 576 that came out in 88. Then shortly after that, there was a prototype of the 574 featuring the C-cap, a cushion midsole. And so it was a hybrid of the 575 and the 576 and utilized different features of both. It was designed to be a more versatile and accessible version of the 576. The final version of the 574s with the new end cap midsole was never actually produced for retail until 1990 or so. It sounds like the exact dates are up for debate, but end cap is a short for encapsulated, which is a soft piece of EVA foam surrounded by the hard plastic ring for stability on the shoe. The end cap unit is located under the heel and inside the midsole, and it cannot be seen from the outside. And to this day, New Balance still uses end cap. So the 574 is actually over 30 years old, tried and true, and one of the models that they keep releasing, a very budget-friendly model from the New Balance lineage. So next up on the list, following the footsteps of that is the New Balance 550s. Now this is one that's kind of a cheat on the list because it's not very readily accessible. I try to post them whenever I see them available, and I believe the retail is now 110. I've seen them in the past from time to time for $99, but sometimes they're 110. So they are a little bit more, but if you can get your hands on them for retail, I think you'll be happy uh, when you can make 
make that happen. Designed by the legend Steve Smith. He's designed so many different models, the Reebok Furies and Nike Spiridons, I believe, and, and also like the Yeezy 700s as well as like the Foam Runners and stuff. So he's a legend in the game for sure. But he actually designed the New Balance 550 and 89. It was an alternative to the 650, which is a high top version, and it very closely resembles the 480s. It was actually debuted as a P500 Basketball Oxford was the name, and it was made primarily of a premium smooth leather. It had some perforated panels and some lightweight mesh in it to address the breathing issues, obviously back in the 80s, that was kind of a thing. Anyways, it was actually priced at $45 when they came out, isn't that crazy? It wasn't until recently that ALD actually revived the 550 line, bringing them out of the archives, creating some collaborations uh, with ALD. Really premium leather on those ones, very nice models, but the baseline ones are, are decent as well and more affordable and definitely more accessible. But on a positive front for New Balance, uh, Teddy Santis, which is actually the founder of ALD, is one of the creatives now in charge of the Made for the USA collection, the more premium collection. So uh, I'll be covering that in kind of a different video, but any which way, uh, for the 990s and stuff, Teddy Santos is curating that collection now. But a 550s, nice little classic model that definitely has a lot of steam, a lot of hype right now, and again, a nice alternative to that Adidas form and uh, Nike Air Force One vibe. All right, so moving on the countdown, we have the Nike Blazer lows or the highs. Honestly, the highs are probably the more timeless version, but I'm definitely currently feeling the low top jumbo swoosh. However, if you want the more uh, identifiable, like classic model, get the mid top version. The Blazers were actually born in 1973, but you see like a lot of times it says the Blazer 77s because the 77 shape in that model is actually one of the more popular ones on the market because George the Iceman Gervin was considered one of the greatest basketball players in NBA history. He actually became the first NBA player to endorse this sneaker back in 77. So the 77 is an iconic version of the blazer and one that is definitely cemented in history. They do fit a little bit snug. So if you have a wider foot like myself, but they're not the most comfortable shoes, you definitely have to go true to size, but it's a great pair and a very classic identifiable one if you get a pair. And then round out the top 10 of my list, we have the Nike Air Force One. Now this is definitely one of the most controversial and one of the most loved and hated pairs of sneakers just in general. I mean, anytime you've had the elevated success of a Nike Air Force One, uh, there's gonna be people that like it and there's gonna be people that wanna sway away from it, which is why there's other great options in this list. But the Nike Air Force One was actually designed by Bruce Kilgore and it was actually his first attempt at designing a basketball sneaker. It's now obviously the iconic Air Force One and it hit the shelves in 1982. It was actually named after the Air Force One plane that the President of the United States travels in. It was the first basketball shoe that actually utilized Nike Air technology. Air Force Ones are probably one of the only sneakers that have such a crazy stigma attached to the sneaker. So for an example, the white on white Air Force One, obviously the sneaker of choice, especially the low top model. Mid top models people don't like. High top models may be okay, but low tops are preferable white on white. But if you get them dirty, expect to get called out because nobody likes a dirty white on white Air Force One. So then you think you're maybe safe by getting a black on black Air Force One instead, low top, it's not the move, man. There's definitely a negative association of black on black Air Force Ones that you have a criminal record, for example. So probably stay away from a black on black Air Force One. But luckily there's a ton of different colorways available of the Air Force Ones. Uh, and so sky's the limit. They do run about $90, $100 for a pair of them, but tried and true, it is a classic, 40 years in the making. And the Air Force One is definitely one of the most iconic pairs of sneakers on your feet. Now you could go the Nike Dunk route as well. I wanted to mention it as a runner up, uh, but it's honestly a little bit harder to get at least at this day and age. Uh, for a pair of Nike Dunk Lows. They're becoming more obtainable. If you try to hit them on Nike sneakers or on release days on Foot Locker and stuff like that, you might be able to luck out and get a pair for $100 at retail. But if you're looking for something you can just get in stock, white on white Air Force Ones are usually the option. But they, again, have lots of different colorways and lots of different variations that sometimes are cheaper than the $90, $100. Anyways, I hope you guys found this list informative for you guys that are going back to school. Uh, it's been a fun one to create for you guys year over year. And again, if you guys are interested in buying in the sneakers in the list, please use the links in the description. It definitely means a lot when you do that. I do get a kickback and it definitely supports the channel. So it is greatly appreciated. But leave a comment in the comment section. What is your choice of sneaker for under $100 for back to school? Curious to see what else you guys have to say. I do have another list that doesn't have the $100 ceiling in place that I will be posting on my channel, but I wanted to do like another variation of a back to school uh, sneaker video. So expect to see that on the channel pretty soon as well. Anyway, have a good rest of the day. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new to it. Drop a like if it was informative and uh, hopefully we'll see you back for some more videos. All right, peace guys.